I was in a conversation recently with um, some people, um, and uh, in our conversation, we were talking about some issues that they brought up with me that they were concerned about, and uh, in that in that conversation, basically, I, I kind of said, I asked a question, and I don't know, I, I can't even remember why I asked this question or where it, why, why it came up, but I just said, well, who do you think is ruling uh, on the earth right now? Who's, who's the ruler of the world today in which we live? Who, who's actually ruling over the earth and ruling, you know, on planet earth? And uh, I, I said, is it Satan? Is it the enemy? Is he in charge here on planet earth? Is he controlling, and, and controlling society? Is he controlling people in society? Is he in control of them? Is he, uh, I mean, what's, what's, who's the boss? Who's in charge? Right? So that's an interesting question, isn't it? Have you ever thought of that question? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Have you ever answered that question? It's all kind of a hard question, isn't it? Because we can look at the world in which we live and we can go, wow, look at that. Uh, 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 there's a political movement right now. There's, there's all kinds of different things going on in the world. And, and we, we hear from our government. We hear from local government. We hear from worldwide governments saying pretty much the same thing. And it's like, it's like almost they're being influenced by outside sources, aren't they? When you think about it. Our world seems to be controlled by something out there. Would you agree? Um, and, you know, we've got a world that we live in, and the world that we live in is basically, it's not just a physical world. You've heard me preach this many times over the years. If you've been with us for any length of time and, and, and sat and heard what I've preached over the years, um, that... We're not a physical world. We're not just a physical world. But there's a spiritual world out there also. There's, there's forces of darkness. The Bible actually teaches us that. There, there's powers and principalities and rulers in high places and spiritual wickedness and da 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 da, -da and on and on and on and on we can go. Correct? And so we, we, we know there's something spiritual going on. Um, some cultures in the world in which we live have more of a, an awareness of that spiritual world than sometimes us in Australia and in America and in our Western culture. We kind of rationalize everything out and logically think things through. And if someone is sick, we always just look at it as like, oh, he's, he's sick because a uh, chemical imbalance or he's got a mind problem. And sometimes that's, that's the issue. They, they, are, they are genuine issues. But how many of you know they could be spiritual too? There could be something going on in the spiritual realm around that person's life and in that person's life that's affecting them and causing them to be sick or causing them to have the problems that they're having. Am, am I? Everybody okay? Ooh. <laughs> Touchy um, conversation this morning. But last week, I, I, I touched on three things real quickly. And I want to start to unfold this um, using the tools that I've given you on, this, on, the, on the understanding and studying and interpreting the Bible. I've given you some tools over the last few weeks, correct? Um, hermeneutics. Diane did a fantastic job with her hermeneutical uh, discourse this morning. I thought she did a fantastic job, don't you? Okay. So, so the reality is, is that it's getting, through, it's getting through to Diane. That's the main thing, you know. But hopefully it's getting through to everyone else in this place. That you're looking at the Bible from that perspective. Um, and so... What, uh, what, I've, what I want to do is just kind of continue to unfold these thoughts and this thought 
that I've started with last Sunday, and that was that Jesus came to come to do three things, three main things. He's come to do a lot of things, but there's three main things that he's come to do. The first thing is, is to bring reconciliation to mankind through salvation. Okay? Jesus came. He died on a cross. He gave his life. He shed his blood for us so that we can be reconciled to God. Amen? And that's called salvation. The second thing that he's really come to do is that he's come to uh, bring reinstatement. To reinstate mankind to sonship before God. The Bible teaches us that we are all sons and daughters of the living God. That when you and I become born again, we are born into the family of God. That makes us the children of God. Amen? So you are my brothers and my sisters. So all of you guys, you are brothers to me from another mother. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I shouldn't even go there, should I? Okay, okay, here we go again. <laughs> the same Heavenly Father, you are exactly right. Thank you, that's true, absolutely true. So the third thing that he's come to do is bring judgment upon some situations and some things upon this earth. So the, 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 the judgment that he's come to bring is judgment upon sin and the, and the enemy, Satan. So he, he came to judge Satan for, for what he had done in the garden. And on my second point that I made last week was that the original mandate that God gave mankind was to have dominion, to be fruitful and to subdue, and actually be um, people that would make another colony of heaven on earth. Born again by the Spirit of God, we become sons and daughters of God, but we also become what's called kings and priests unto our God. So that means that we are now ruling and reigning with Christ on earth. We actually are. Now, we don't rule and reign with machine guns and bombs. But we rule and reign by the good deeds that we do. By helping people. By bringing salvation to people. Yes, amen. Because people don't get saved unless there's a preacher to go and tell them about Jesus. You didn't get saved because you just kind of wandered into salvation. You got saved because somebody told you about Jesus. Correct? So that's how we rule and reign with Christ. We rule and reign with Christ and when we pray for one another. We break sickness off people's bodies in the name of Jesus. Didn't we sing that today? All authority in your word. Yes, we, we taught that. We sang that. So we, we rule and reign, not with machine guns and by becoming a big government that rules and reigns, but we rule and reign with Christ as, as his people and as his joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Everything that Jesus has is ours. He's given it to us to rule and reign. So in other words, what we lost in the very beginning, in the garden, Jesus won back for us. Through Jesus Christ. And he gave it back to us. So one of the things that he did is he defeated sin. He, he completely annihilated sin. He destroyed the sin problem. He forgave everyone who sinned. Once and for all. The Bible teaches us that. It wasn't, it wasn't kind of like, oh well, I'll just forgive you. But sorry, Billy. Sorry, uh, you know, you're too bad. She's good. She's better than you. So, well, you'd say that anyhow, wouldn't you? Yeah. So, 
So we can forgive her, but man, you got to do some more work on this, buddy. You got to really toe the line. You got to really, ooh. <laughs> How many of you know that wasn't true? Jesus forgave her and forgave him all at the same time. And forgave you and forgave you and forgave you and forgave you and forgave, forgave all of us all at the same time. You didn't do anything to deserve that. You didn't do anything to earn that or get it. Except all you did was you believed by faith in Jesus Christ and you were born again. You were born again. That means that when you die, you go to hell. No? Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, wow, I went the wrong way, didn't I? Did I go the wrong way? So when you die, because you are born again, where do you go? Heaven. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me just back up. Do you need to be baptized in water before that? You sure? Okay. Are you okay with that? Do you, do you need to come to church faithfully every week to, to actually have that happen in your life? Do you have to confess your sins to a priest? Whoa. You, you guys are pretty smart here. So if I was to, to get saved today, if I was to actually ask Jesus into my heart right now today, and tomorrow I die, and I know nothing about nothing about Christianity, I didn't grow up, let's just say uh, hypothetically, I didn't grow up in church, so I know nothing about this Christian thing, I know nothing about God, except I heard the gospel message, I received Christ into my life today, so tomorrow I die, Oh, God, don't let me say that. Man. I'm not confessing that. But tomorrow I die. Where do I go? I go to heaven. Why? Because I just simply believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And all that was accomplished 2,000 years ago on a cross. We just celebrated it. And we recognized that Jesus his blood and His body broken for us so we can be forgiven of all of our sins and washed of all unrighteousness. You're agreeing with me, I know. Yeah. Is that true? We all know that. But how many of you know that sometimes we, we start to work for God? We try to earn some salvation we try to earn some brownie points. And yet we don't have to do anything at all. It's a free gift. Absolutely. But the other thing that Jesus did, he, so he brought judgment. In other words, all of the wrath, the judgment, and the indignation that God had upon man's sin was poured out upon Jesus, who was the sacrifice that was made to take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Take away. Now he's made you and me righteous before our God. It's called imputed righteousness. You following that? The second thing, I'm not even going to get close to getting through any of this. I get sidetracked. You guys always sidetrack me. I start going somewhere else. Yeah, I don't need your help. That's right. That's true. The second thing that Jesus did in, in bringing that kind of judgment and, and bringing salvation to mankind is that he brought judgment upon the enemy. He judged Satan for what he had done in the garden. There's, a, there's an interesting word that God says in the very garden, beginning of the garden. He says, and there will come a child that will be born of the woman, and she will crush the head of the serpent. 
That whole terminology is that one day, the very person who deceived you, Eve, is going to be, there's going to become a child that's going to be born to you, right? Not to you personally, but to your seed, right? Somewhere down the road. And that person's going to crush that person. Going to destroy that person again. That's in reference to the enemy. You know the story of the garden? They listened to the serpent. Let me ask you a question. When Adam and Eve were walking in the garden and they were doing everything, do you think that they had authority and power and dominion and before the fall? Do you, did they have that? They had that, right? They were in charge. They had wisdom. They had guidance. They had direction. They were actually what's called, what we would call, the governing authorities on the earth at the time. They were governing. They were in authority over the earth or over that place, and they were to expand it and to grow it. But when they were lied to and deceived, what happened? They lost what? What did they lose? They lost all the authority. They lost rulership, didn't they? They stopped being the kings and queens of the earth. Did they? So they lost that, didn't they? Right? They lost it through a temptation. They lost it through a deception. And they lost it through a lie. You tracking with me? So, so we, we hear of and we read about, and we're going to read about this now. We hear about and we read about the second Adam. His name is Jesus. We have the first Adam, who is Adam. Then we have a second Adam who was portrayed as Jesus. The first Adam disobeyed God. The second Adam obeyed God. But both Adams were put through a test. They were both put through a temptation. And we read in Luke's Gospel, in chapter 4, where Jesus is being tempted. Have you ever wondered why Jesus needed to be tempted? Have you ever wondered why? Is it just an illustration to show us that, hey, you know what? You know, if Jesus is tempted, you know, you're going to be tempted also. So this is how you can overcome the temptation. Do you, do you think that's why it's in the Bible? It's bigger than that. How many of you know it's bigger than that? Guys, guys am I I'm not getting the response? I... I like response. Okay, I'll keep going. Okay. So, so let, me, let me tell you some things that are very interested in the temptation. So Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the dark wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards, when uh, they had ended, he was hungry. I would be hungry also. Amen? And the devil said to him, now he starts to talk about the temptations. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him and say, saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, that uh, word of God. This is, this is the one I really want you to focus in on now. Verse 5. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, in some kind of vision. Then the devil, taking him up, uh, okay, and the devil uh, said to him, all this authority, listen to it, I will give to you. And their glory, 
For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. At this point in time, how many of you know Satan is lying again? He's not going to give this up. He's not going to give it to Jesus. And he knows perfectly well who Jesus is. And he has no control at this moment. He's never had any control over Jesus. He's never had any power over Jesus. Because he's been the, because he was the son of God. But also he was the son of man. Are you which, catching me? Okay. So it goes on. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay, and Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship, what? The Lord your God, and him only will or shall you worship. Only worship him. So all Satan's doing, he's saying, listen, listen, I'll tell you what, second Adam, if you will worship me, I can give you all of this. And he could, because it was in his possession. When did he get it? At the fall. The first Adam gave it to him, because he disobeyed God. Are you with me? So because of that, now Jesus is saying, I'm going to worship you. But now the, 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 the battle is not yet finished. Okay? Satan is still kind of has some control. So one of, the, one of the major problems, I think, in the church, and this was my conversation with these people that I was talking to, I just said, listen, I said, so who rules now? Who's the ruler on the earth? Who's, who's ruling now? And they, they kind of said, well, it, it must be Satan because he's in control of the world and he's doing this and he's doing that and he's manipulating this and manipulating that. It's like, okay, well, then, then if Jesus has now all power and authority, I mean, that's all. A double L. And, and he rules in heaven and earth. So if he's ruling in heaven and earth, then you, you can't have two people ruling. There's a conflict. It doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't want to have rulership, correct? But he can't. And another interesting thing that happens to Christians, it happens in the world, and it's, ma it's a major problem in the world, but it's also a big problem sometimes in the church, is we think that God and Satan are equal. It's called dualism. That somehow, like, like Greek mythology talks about this. You have Thor, who's the son of Thor in the Bible, you're not in the Bible. Is it Thor in the Bible? Thor's not in the Bible. In Greek mythology, you got Thor, and 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 is it Zeus, his dad? Sorry. Oh, okay, uh, Norse, whatever the mythology. Zeus was correct. Okay, Zeus. Okay. What's the other one? Norseman. Nor Norse, Otis. Okay, so let's let's go to Thor and Otis. Let's go to Thor and Otis. It's just another mythology, right? They're gods in some other culture, right? Okay, thank you everybody for correcting me and helping me out here. Because sometimes I get it wrong. Did you know I get it wrong sometimes, and I apologize for that. Okay, so so Thor, whose dad was Odin. Right? But, but you've seen the movie. Have you ever seen the movie? No. Seen the movie Thor? Okay, it's almost like his brother, who was adopted into the family by Odin. If you've watched the movie, Logi, what? Loki. 
Lukey. <laughs> low key. He's the low key kind of guy. So Loki, or whatever his name is, he seems to be as powerful as Thor. Have you noticed that? Not quite, but he's really close to being powerful, isn't he? And you see this battle going on between these gods and all this stuff going on. And you know what? Somehow it gets into the mindset of people that God and Satan... Satan's just as powerful. He's just as strong. He's just... Let me tell you something. Satan is a created being by God. You and I are created beings by God. I can only be in one place at a time. Here I am. Satan can only be in one place at a time. But somehow we get it into our thinking that he's against me or he's attacking me or he's after me and the devil made me do it. <laughs> Flip Wilson, you ever remember Flip Wilson? Anybody remember Flip? No, some, some probably do. Okay. Let, let me tell you something that Jesus came and defeated the enemy once and for all. He, he, dis, he destroyed him. He defeated him. He took from him everything that he had taken from Ad, the first Adam. He took it back. It belongs to him. And he freely, not like Satan, but he freely gives it to every single one of us. Everything that he possesses, he gives to us in this life and in this world. You, you catching that? Because this is what it says in John chapter 12. How am I doing for time? Well, that's good. That's, that's pretty good. I got nine minutes, right, to half past. But that doesn't mean anything, because that just means that it's half past. <laughs> Did you like that, Rob? <laughs> that little. Okay, John chapter 12. Okay, let's read this. And starting with verse, uh, John chapter 12, starting with verse... Um, uh, it should be 27. Yeah, there you go. You guys are really helping me out. Now you're coming alive. Did I need to do that Thor thing, you know, to, to get you all coming out of yourselves? See, that was a ploy of mine. That was a strategy of mine to get you all going. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> okay. John 12, 27. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came. So what is he talking about? Let's do a little bit of Bible study here this morning. What is, he, what is Jesus saying in that? What is he meaning by that? He's talking about his crucifixion coming up, right? Okay, how many of you know the disciples still don't get it? The disciples still don't know what's going on. They think Jesus has come to set up an earthly kingdom, a physical earthly kingdom that's going to be ruling and he's going to knock out the Romans, right? But he's not talking about that. He's talking about salvation that's going to come through his death and, 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 and sacrifice and crucifixion. So he says, now, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. And now this is, this is what I want you to, to really see right this morning. It says this, verse 31. Now, everybody say with me, now... 
Judgment is upon this world. Say with me now. The ruler of this world will be cast out. So when was all this happening? Time indicator. Now. Is that a time indicator? Would you all agree? So it's not going to happen in the future. It's not in the kingdom age. In the future. When did it happen? Now. At, time, at, the, at that very time. He says, now judgment is upon this world. Judgment is coming upon Everything, in other words, the sins of the world are being judged right now. And not only the the judgment coming upon the world, but also the judgment upon the enemy who's going to be cast out. He will have no more power. He will have no more authority. He will have no more dominion like he has had. Many of us live like we live in an old covenant and an Old Testament life. See, because the enemy, all the enemy has is permission. He needs to get permission to do anything to any one of you. He has to get permission. You are a blood-bought child of God. He cannot do anything to you in any way, shape, or form. You need to get that here. That has to go here. Throw away all your religion. Throw away dualism. Chuck away Thor. Please. Okay? He can't do anything to you. And we live almost like a Job in the Old Testament. Job... The only way that the Satan could even touch Job, who was under the old covenant, was to go to God and ask permission to have hurt him. And a lot of people still believe that. Oh, well, you know, I've got this problem in my life, and I've got this going on, I've got that going on, and I'm sick, and I've got this, I've got that. It's because, you know, well, God must have given him permission. God's allowing this to happen in my life. Something changed in the New Testament. How many of you know that? Something changed in the New Covenant. Diane read it today. This is the cup, the blood of the New Covenant. We drink that. We've accepted that. That is, we are in a new realm. The enemy still has to ask permission, but I, I, could, I could probably guarantee you that he's not going to go around asking permission because he's one person. He's one identity. I don't think he's going to go searching out God in heaven. I don't even think he likes to go there like he did for Job. He's not going to go there and ask permission to tempt any one of you because we are all little squirts. In the kingdom. Not little squirts, but we're... I mean, what, what damage are we doing to the enemy? Is he really worried about you? If we, yeah, we're spreading the gospel. He's worried about that. But, but really, in, 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 in world dynamics, I mean, are we... I don't think he's really after us as much as sometimes we think that he is. Are are you catching what I'm meaning? The only other thing he has is lies. You believe the lie, you empower the liar. If you think he is this all-powerful being that can take you down, 
then he's won. He's got you. He's rubbing his hands. He, you, I got you right where I need you. Right? Because that's not what my Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. It says that he was judged and he was cast out. He was defeated on the cross. I have got probably about 30 scriptures written down here that say exactly the same thing. But I'm not going to give them all to you because we've run out of time. But I'm going to give you one more scripture. Revelations chapter 11. If you have it there, uh, um, Adam. Isn't Adam doing a great job today? He set this all up. He's Great job, Adam. He's the second Adam, by the way. He's, he's, he's part of the second Adam crew, okay? <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Revelations chapter 11 and verse 15. I love, I love, I love this scripture. Listen to what it says. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices, where? In heaven, saying the kingdom of the world has become, what? The kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. So whose kingdom become God's kingdom again? The kingdom of this world, right, became God's kingdom again. Matthew 28, 18 says, All power and all authority has been given to me on heaven, in heaven and on earth. It's been given all to Jesus. Like I said, I've got about 20 or 30 other scriptures that I could give you. Um, I'm not going to, but I'm going to read one thing else to you, and then I'm closing. When the church makes Satan the God of this age, it has fallen from one for one of the devil's schemes. Like I said, the only thing that he has is he has, he has to ask permission, number one. He has lies, but he has schemes. He's always strategizing to bring your downfall. And we just got to be aware of that. It says just don't give the enemy place. Don't, don't give him a place in your life. Don't give him a place in your thoughts. And it goes on and it says, it, it, Gary says this. He says, when the church makes, I'll say it from the beginning, when the church makes Satan the God of this age, it has fallen for one of the devil's schemes, giving him a lot more credit and power than he deserves. He is quite satisfied in having anyone believe one of his lies. He likes you to believe in his lies because then he knows he's got you. So, what we have to do here, and this is why I'm trying to teach on this as much as I can, is that Jesus came to bring salvation, but he also came to defeat the enemy, didn't he? Judge the enemy, defeat him, destroy his works, and give that, and take that back, and then give it to all of his believers, so that you and I can live in victory and wholeness. Doesn't mean that we don't come under attack. Doesn't mean that we're not tempted from time to time. Doesn't mean that we don't slip up and make mistakes. Doesn't mean any of that. But what it does mean is that Jesus is in control of my life. Holy Spirit is the governing authority in me, isn't he? He's the boss. He's guiding me and directing me. He's leading me and, and showing me the way and the truth and the life. And Jesus is in control, not the enemy. Not this world, because Jesus defeated that all on the cross 2,000 years ago. Amen? Are you glad for that? Yes. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we love you today. and We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We pray that you would just strengthen us, that you would help us, that you'd guide us and direct us and lead us in all your ways. That we'd make you the Lord of our lives. 
that you wouldn't be just our Savior and our, and, and our, but our Lord and our Savior. Our Lord, the one who's the master of our lives. You are in control. You are over us, Lord. Holy Spirit, we just pray you'd quicken every single person in this place, that you'd have your way in every heart and life in this place. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you, and have a great week.